Hi everyone, first time talking to the camera here, so excuse me if I'm a bit nervous. I just wanted to address why I haven't got round to posting part 11 yet, and the reason for that, um, and I know I always take a little bit too long to release my videos anyway, but there is a good reason for this time, and that's because I am in discussions with the company that provided the rubber roof for this very building, and hoping to get you guys a bit of a discount along the way. So that is the reason behind that. So apologies that's taken quite a long time to sort out, um, but it is coming, it is fully edited. It's just a few little details and it'll be on its way. So in this video, I thought I'd address some comments that I've noticed in the build videos so far, things along the lines of, gosh, I haven't got the guts to build this myself or what experience I had uh, prior to doing this, or, or even just saying, you know, wow, these videos help with the confidence and you know, when people are taking on these projects themselves. I think I mentioned part one that I'm no tradesman, I've never worked on a building site or anything like that, but I have done a few woodworking projects before now and used a few tools and I sort of know a little bit about woodworking. And that's generally the direction that I want this channel to go in towards the sort of DIY woodworking type of maker channel. So these are the past projects um, and this is my experience in total before doing this build. So let's go on with it. First up is my chicken coop and run, as I decided that I wanted a slice of the country life here in London. All the wood for this project was salvaged from skips around my area. I started with the coop, building it out of ply, chipboard and fencing panels, basically anything I could get my hands on. I built it with doors that can open up and so I was able to clean it out, a hinged roof and a nesting box where the hens could lay. Once in place, I set about building a run. There's a whole family of foxes that live in the alleyway behind the garden so it had to be fox proof. To achieve this, I dug trenches and used wire and rubble to prevent them from being able to burrow under and used strong chicken wire fastened with hoop nails. Then I built a ramp up to the coop, added a gutter and plastic corrugated roof to keep it dry. Whilst I was doing this, my chicks had arrived and I let them explore their new home whilst I was building it. Once they'd moved in, they grew up very fast and I realised that they really didn't have quite enough space to keep them happy, so I let them out into the garden as much as I could, but as anyone who keeps chickens knows, they quickly eat and scratch your plants and lawn. However, my side border was covered in ivy and weeds, but the shrubs that I wanted to keep were big enough that I didn't have to worry about the chickens harming them. So I created a timber border so that any dirt they kicked about wouldn't end up on the path and a wire fence is enough to keep them in most of the time, and I don't have to worry about weeding that border ever. For access, I made a little door, which the foxes can't figure out, but allows the girls to go in and out during the day. So all is well, they have their space, I have my garden, and they lay eggs every day. But they do need cleaning out rather often, so that's what my next project was for, my compost heap, which is rather hidden at the moment with bits from my garage demolition. It's a three bin system made from rafters from neighbours loft conversions. To accommodate the removable front panels I used a router to cut grooves in the post and it's worked really well. I added some red worms and it produces great compost as you need quite a lot of brown material which I get from the pine shavings from the chicken coop. I'm looking forward to having a planer thicknesser so I can stop buying shavings. Moving on, the next project was the back porch. This was more of a necessity than a passion project as it was in quite bad shape. At some point it will probably need knocking down but as a quick repair I pulled off the old cladding, added some OSB and ply and reclad with some planks I found in my garage. I gave it a paint and it was good as new. It's an unheated space so it didn't need vapour barriers or insulation. It's been about two years so I'm hoping it will last for a few more before having to be replaced. Next up are my planters. These were made from fence panels and I've actually got a video on my channel about how I made them, so I won't go into that here. I've not done too much with them this year as I've been concentrating on the garden room, but in past years I've grown all sorts in them. Last one for outside is my garden shed. I made this in anticipation of building the garden room as all my spades and forks were in the garage I was about to knock down and I didn't want to share my future workshop with my garden tools. 
Again, the main structure was made from old rafters and all the cladding except for the front was salvaged. In total I think I spent about £70, which is pretty decent for a shed. Last up, a couple of projects inside. When we had a loft conversion done, the door to the eaves looked a bit dull to me, so I took it off and cut a hole in the middle with a jigsaw and put in some shelving. And after a quick paint, it was back in place and now it houses all my camera equipment and various other bits. I've got three housemates, some of whom you'll have seen giving me a hand with the floor and walls of my garden room, and we have loads of shoes, so I decided to build a shoe rack from pallet wood. I designed it so that the shelves can be removed, so if I wanted to put wellies in, they can be kept too. I finished the top with some scaffold boards and varnished it with the same stuff I used on the sanded back floors in the house, my first piece of furniture. So that's all my main projects that I made prior to starting on the garden room, so overall very little experience. I guess it does help if you've worked with wood before, because you'll have a greater understanding of how malleable it is, what strains it can and can't take, and what it's like to make it split. But if you're wondering whether you're capable of building a garden room, I'd suggest starting on something smaller, just work out how to use the basic tools, and then go for it. It only looks difficult when you see the final product, but hopefully you can see that each stage when broken down isn't too hard and any mistakes can be rectified. I'll see you in part 11, soon.